welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Uh, today we are setting up this tiny little satellite here with a bunch of different little science experiments to go fly past the moon and collect data from the moon as we fly past. It's going to be the first time we pass the moon's sphere of influence. Um, and then I started figuring out like, you know, what, what after that? What am I going to do after that? Um, so I had an idea to sort of slingshot off the moon. Um, and end up in a geostationary uh, orbit. So that's why this is called the LTGS, the Lunar Transit Geostationary Satellite. Hopefully I'll have enough fuel. Um, in order to do this, I may have to leave one of the upper stages as debris in either suborbital or in orbit around Earth, and I really don't like doing that. I'll see if I don't need to, but I might need to in order to have a little bit extra Delta V to use. Um, but pretty much, it's it's I haven't gotten any more science experiments. It's just uh, some of the basic ones, but it's gonna help us. It's gonna help us a little bit. Here, get rid of the fairings for right now. I wanted to make this slightly larger, but I wasn't sure if this engine can burn for much longer. So it's, it's at four minutes and thirty seven seconds already. So if we have three hundred seconds to deal with, that is five minutes. So what we can do, we can give it slightly, slightly more fuel. And I'm gonna move this up to five minutes. Try to be as exact as I can. Four minutes, 59 seconds. I think that's as an exact, that's as exact as we can get. Plop that right on there. That's all there is to it. That's all I have to do to put a satellite on top of a rocket. All right, now I just got to check my staging. We got the main engines, the couple. It's the same vehicle as we've seen launch other satellites. It's the same vehicle, just amplified pretty much. Now, if you may notice, uh, you'll see I have a vehicle right here called the AUV. I forgot what that stood for. Maybe automated something vehicle. I forgot what it stands for, uh, but you'll notice I have that here, and the only reason I have that here is to check the moon's inclination. Because I didn't really know how else to how else to check the moon's inclination from the KSC, other than just doing this. So I'll show you what I mean. All right, you'll see it's just a small little vehicle here. Uh, it just needed to park it about where we would be. So I believe it's already targeting the moon. Yep, you can see in the rendezvous planner right here. I'll just put it here so we can zoom in on it. Um, targeting the moon and our relative inclination is 50, almost 56. Now what I can do is I can time warp. And you can see the relative inclination is gonna be changing. And it'll get down to, oh, look at that. Look how low it gets down to. Still going though. Still going lower. Oh, okay. Now this is essentially our launch window. Now I missed it. I missed the 0.2 something. So what I'm gonna do to stay as efficient as possible is actually wait until it happens again. I think it's gonna happen once more at night. Oh, actually no. Every time I've simulated this, um. I guess it just happened to do with uh, where the moon was and where the earth was in its rotation. It's been a night launch, but I think we might actually have an evening launch. We might have a launch where we see daylight for the first time in a long time. We don't have to just be in the dark during the whole thing. Looks like 0.29 might be our lowest right now. What we're gonna do is go back to the space center. Oh, it went down to 0.28. Okay. All right. Here we are at the launch pad. You can see our relative inclination has already gone down to 0.26. And we'll see if it goes down any more. But if it goes up to 0.27, then that means that our launch window is essentially right then. All right, I think 0.25 is as low as our inclination is gonna get relative to the moon from uh, where we are on the Earth. 
So I'm going to launch before it goes up to 0.26. All right, so 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Main ignition start. 4, 3, 2, 1. And we have positive thrust in our engines. We're letting go. You'll see here, I did actually wait until it went to 0.26. It looks like 0 0.25 was the smallest inclination we could get this time around. All right, so I wanted to talk a little bit about this rocket. Uh, you'll notice it has a ton of engines on the first stage. The rest of it is the exact same rocket as we've seen from the first episode. The second and third stages, that is. And we'll, he we'll see the side boosters separate here kind of lag my computer out a bit uh, but I did be I was able to crank up 15,000 Delta V uh, the thing is the second stage didn't use all of its fuel and that was due to the ascent profile I used which you can see here I'm trying to um, raise the nose up from the horizon a little bit more than usual and if I had done that more this stage here would have probably used a little bit more of its fuel, but back to old me. Or, okay, that's actually pretty circularized. Uh, it's off by five kilometers. That's not too bad. And I think uh, the subtle changes I made to the design made me waste a little bit less delta V. This was over a thousand when I ran the simulation. I brought it to 734. And I think we could actually bring this down even more if I change the ascent profile to be even higher and get a higher apoapsis from the start uh, this is perfectly fine for what we need first time we open this engine is to bring our inclination down to zero like that okay Good rotation. And you'll see here uh, that we are setting up the maneuver to slingshot past the moon and end up with a periapsis around Kerbin that is equal to geostationary. And what that means is if we have a perfectly circularized geostationary orbit, when you look back at Earth, you'll pretty much be hovering very high above, uh, above the Earth in the exact same spot on the ground. It will look like the Earth isn't spinning because you will be falling around the Earth at the exact same speed that the Earth is spinning. And actually during time warp here, uh, my game crashed, so <laughs> this happens. And hope, oh, <laughs> and there's a game crash right there. All right, let's see what the damage is. All right, let's get back to it, shall we? After that excruciating long loading screen. Let's see where it left us off. All right, we load up the game again. We'll see we're on the exact same trajectory. And I'm thinking, everything is fine. This is perfect. Nothing, I didn't forget anything. And well, I forgot something. Was that not active? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. Oh, I wonder when our last quick save was. We'll start from here. And we'll start by activating this. Since we definitely need it. And we're shutting down the avionics of both of these, as well as this small antenna. I'm gonna hit time warp to... Oh no! Apparently, <laughs> I don't. I don't understand. Oh, the the kraken got me here. The kraken definitely got me. All right, yeah. One more quick save later, and actually, something I wanted to mention. You notice how I left the satellite spinning like that? You can see the nav ball, and that's because I didn't want to use RCS to uh, correct my spin because I was afraid it would move my orbit too much. So there's two problems um, that have come to my attention since getting here. <laughs> and there are two uh, problems with the fact that I didn't take a whole lot of time planning this mission through. 
and actually like thoroughly thinking about what's going to happen. So the first problem is a little bit obvious here, and that is uh, this magnometer boom. In order to log the data, it needs to extend, and well, it has no room to extend. And the second thing that I just now realized, because I, I, I wasn't thinking about it too much, is the orbital experiment here and the thermometer both um, collect more science in each biome that you're across. So, essentially, instead of slingshotting, um, instead of slingshotting around the moon, what I think I'm going to do instead is put us in orbit around the moon. It was designed to go past the moon and then get into a geosynchronous orbit. But there's nothing really that I can do with a satellite in geosynchronous orbit other than just having it there. Okay, so as I mentioned, I could have uh, proceeded with its original plan and go past the moon and then burn at periapsis of the Earth and have a geosynchronous satellite. But I didn't think that it would really benefit me much. And that's because the home and house satellite, even though they're in weird orbits, they pretty much cover us for um, having connection from low Earth orbit anywhere. And I didn't really feel the need to put a geosynchronous orbit, especially when I realized, hey, I have more than enough fuel to actually just capture around the moon and be a moon satellite. So that's what we end up doing. Come on. Village. Very stable. That is all the fuel that we've got. And we do have RCS that we're going to use now. I'm going to decouple. Oh, this has no connection, but I think, at least in theory, if I activate this antenna here. Yes, it worked. Now this has connection bouncing off of this satellite all the way to Earth from the high gain antenna. Oh, that's incredible. Okay, we need to point this retro. So right here, I'm attempting to deorbit that upper stage into the moon with all the RCS I've got left. And unfortunately, it was just barely not enough. It skimmed over the surface at about a thousand kilometers at the periapsis. And here, I, we use the RCS of the actual satellite to circularize very low above the moon. So we get this shot here. And our satellite is left there to communicate and Extract science. All right. And that'll do it. We have a orbit around the moon and collected a lot of science from it, actually, too. I guess all that's left now is to mark this as debris. The only drawback of this mission that I've seen is we left debris in orbit of Earth, and we also left debris in orbit of the moon. All right, we're up to 231. That seems pretty awesome. And that actually means we're going to grab at least a few of these. I'm not sure what ones I'm going to grab. There's a lot to choose from. There's a lot to look over. But we'll see what we can do about possibly landing on the moon next episode. Thank you all for watching and peace out. What